Another rush of the moon landing. Takes another turn off it. Hey, look, you see, this is where this third tier building, the Royal Society, it really comes into its own late stage of the game. And a great gen- Oh my lord, an actual great general. I believe you are a modern armor booster, aren't you? Um, oh, hang on. There's a builder here that I'd quite like to get rid of. Get rid of that. There's only one charge. Go on, are you boosting modern armor? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Oh, the jet fighter's back. Oh, ho, ho, being strafed. My field cannon did survive that, though. Just about it did survive. Now I'm not giving my relics away. No, Georgia. What makes you think that I would even consider doing that? I've now got enough tourism, by the way, but I'm picking up about five or six foreign tourists every turn. So once I, yeah, remove Germany and Ethiopia from the game, Babylon's tourism is going to be the leader, and I should be able to get towards a culture victory. It's just, I just... I feel like I'm not going fast enough. Menelik is on nanotech now. Robotics helps though. Ho ho ho, giant death robots. I only have three uranium. Three, is that it? Why have I not got any uranium? That's one source. I own half the world. It's only 11 on the map. Ah, oh dear. Two of it is actually next door near to me, so I can get that stuff easily. Granada has some. That's the bit I've already unlocked. Germany's got some. Never good. Mogadishu's got some. Georgia's got uh, quite a bit. Ottomans have got more up there. Georgia's got a lot. Yeah, so these two sources are kind of the ones that I need to work on. Those should be obtainable, but we'll work on that in a second. There's the moon landing. Huzzah! I think that gives me about 17,000 culture, which should be enough to pretty much finish the civic tree for me. Let's get global, uh, global warming mitigation. I'm going to have a lot of cities running that project, not just to cool the world and stop it from spreading, which Germany's done a very valiant job, to be fair. But it should also help my diploid favor, because each one gives me 30. Already got 57 coming in per turn. I mean, look, the pagodas and the Renaissance walls have massively helped to stop me from going negative with all of this war. I'm still generating huge amounts, even though I've kind of declared war on half the world. Just shows you how powerful that strategy is. Oh, there we go. Look, Liang is now ready. Let's get myself seven charge builders. Oh, yes. That says I can't get there in time, but actually it's because the movement hasn't quite fixed itself in yet, so that's okay. Well, robotics is fun. I've got a lot of other things that I want to get, but I'd better unlock the exoplanet uh, first, and then we'll go and get the booster projects. I'm, I'm hopefully... Well, one of the questions that was asked to me in the comments before was, if you win a victory, can the AI still get it? And honestly... I have no idea. Like, maybe it locks it out, maybe it doesn't. I, I can't guarantee it either way. So we'll treat it as if we, we can't rush it, and, and we'll go from there. Biosphere's six turns away, by the way, which is pretty good. I'm just slowly funneling my trader. It's into that city now. Also, I now have landed military engineers, which means that I can make myself airstrips. So I can finally now get the furthest reached bombers. Um, actually, this one is so far away, it can't make it all the way down. What about this one? Yeah, you can. Perfect. I had a bunch of bombers that were totally out of range here. Now they are here. Ready to rock. And I can get my jet fighter on board as well. That massively helps. That should hopefully stop the enemy strafing a little bit. Ethiopia's put a lot of environmental improvements down. They've got a national park. They've, they've done well. I'm going to pick up tourism from them. What are they on? 482 tourism per turn. Yeah, there's a lot to be gained from taking over Ethiopia. Well, I mean, there's also like a lot of land to be taken. So, you know, there's, there's multiple, multiple things to achieve in this particular war. But that is something that will massively help. Go on, Georgia. Kill my fossils. Yes. Silk text. That's what I want to see because we can still get regular relics. I might have all my usual relics and my, my, my sort of old god ones. The regular relics are still available. Plus, this is Eastern Orthodoxy. I'm actually getting rid of someone else's religion. Oh, wow. It's a 2,000 science per turn now. That's huge. How did they get that high? Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask questions. It's all good. It's all fine. There's another relic as well. Nice. And Istanbul also. Uh, that will be why I have kill one now. Ah, uh, well, there we go. That's kind of helpful. Oh, Konya is almost about to flip as well. Oh, Istanbul. Ottomans. Oh, wouldn't it be a shame? Wouldn't it be a shame if somebody took over this city, fed it loads of food, and somehow the loyalty pressure increased because, I don't know, some projects were running that city? Like some bread and circus? I don't know. I don't know. Madness. I'm sure it won't actually happen. Uh, that is a seven charge building out. Oh, yeah, that is a good boost. Perfect. I love the range of jet bombers. I really do. I know I mentioned a lot, but I think they were my first Civ love. They, they really were. Just when you realized how far away you could strike from. City number two, which we should move the jet fighter. 
that pushes it back a bit and I think that actually delays the turn so it can't move next turn it has to sort of sort itself out that's kind of what I'm hoping anyway oh but yeah look I can use their airf their airfields hey so when you have massive fights like this that you kind of consider like warlord's throne would it have been worth it and and the answer is always probably but I think the builders that we earned as we started to get the settlers out like I think that bonus as we were leveling up the game that really really helped us to sort of accelerate a bit so happy with the choices we made can this tank get all the way down oh yes it can gore should now fall I hope I think and I think it should stay pretty loyal actually minus three this one's plus seven minus 13 yeah look we're we're very rapidly filling up this area now we can now do future civic every two turns that's good. Extra 50 favor each time. I mean, Germany's still got 2,222 Diplo favor. The amount of projects they're running is a little concerning, but I think it should be fine overall. Can we just convert Babylon to my religion now? Yeah, we can. I'm hoping that will mean we've got a lot more tourism with them. Yeah, look at that. We do. Perfect. That's great. Have we had the merchant, by the way, that can... No, this is an industrial era merchant. Where are we right now? Industrial era. Yeah, no, hang on. So that's good there are merchants that increase or was the thing gone that increase the amount of tourism you get but the next one is in the modern era so we don't need to rush these through unless i really need someone else Meh. i mean that's two envoys isn't it yeah all right let's pick up john jacob ah and sarah Bridler. there we go that's the one we want extra tourism rate in gaza gamu means that my giant death robot has only 2400 gold oh go on that's all of my uranium but i want at least one Smart materials, that's the last project. Nice. And offshore wind farms, that is really, really good. I'm just having a look to see because my alliances have expired this turn and I want to see who we are going to renew them with. I own the capital of the Ottomans and from a cultural point of view, I don't need to worry about them. So they are absolutely having their alliance renewed. I oh, know, they're not going to do that. I think the game's going to do that thing now where it refuses to renew alliances and friendships because it thinks I'm just about to win the game, which I am. What it doesn't know is I've got to win the game multiple times. So we'll kind of hope in. I'll just grab open borders with all of them for now. And the tourism isn't hit, but I think, uh, yeah, well, that's okay. We're, we're in a position that I'm happy with. I want the alliances to renew themselves. Germany needs to die. Georgia, I need the capital of. Yeah, everyone else I need to attack. God, there's a lot of conquering to do, isn't there? And Ethiopia have just increased all the strength of all of their cities, actually. All the ones to the north have got like 120s. Impressive. Just a little diversion, very briefly. Diplomatic League is going to come in and Containment. Gonna pop you in instead of Republican Legacy just for a second. Because I've got some envoys and I want to do some cheekiness. Um, first of all, two into Cardiff to pick Cardiff up. It actually gives a lot of renewable power to my nation, which Biosphere is going to boost and it's going to give me a lot of tourism i can then go to someone like candy menelik is a different government to me i believe yes they are so i can go for or do i just take oh hong kong I, oh yeah you know what i'm gonna take hong kong because ludwig oh no ludwig is my government ah interesting oh georgia isn't though oh Chingeti. oh this is a good city state that is a good city state one two three that actually should convert into seven envoys yeah it does look at that lovely stuff one more rush oh no that's a six charge builder nope we want the seven charge builder to go through oh that's close yeah look at that giant death robot takes gondar wahaha <laughs> gondar calls for aid actually ethiopia's got smart materials they've got everything they need to win this and i haven't any kind of left words words are a thing i haven't got anywhere near their heartlands so how many spaceports have they got at least one two three yeah enough they really, I, I need to speed up. Like this attack is going well, but I'm tempted to believe it is not as fast as it needs to be. And Germany wants to be friends. No, 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 not going to happen. Mars colony goes off into the atmosphere. Away with you. Go off to Mars. And immediately we have the exoplanet ready to go. It says six turns. Ignore it. It's actually four. So Ethiopia remains in a golden age. Uh, unfortunately, Ottomans have gone heroic. Ah, oh, that's no fun. Tamir, though, Tamir's gone dark, so that could be relatively useful. I'll stay on to arms because the golden age war is just a lovely thing to have if we can get it. And Containment and Diplomatic League, you can disappear again. I liked my old ones. Republican Legacy is back. Phew. And Economic Union. Again, it's just the extra gold it gives, the extra production from shipyards as well. 
Yeah, the Ottomans are not going to lose any more cities to loyalty. Okay, that's fine. To be honest, I don't need any more. It was just fun to claim the ones we did. Quite expensive, this, but a missile cruiser armada, I believe, is the strongest ranged attack a city on Civ 6 can have at 107. I might be wrong on that. Without cards, that is. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is. Oh, modern armors. They, my units are getting hit pretty hard from the city defenses. More airstrips, though. Yep, all of the bombers. I need you to follow me. Follow me, make your way to the front lines. That's all of them on the continent though. Ah, yeah, that makes me feel a lot better. Even the artillery is now getting involved. Look at this, ad war. And I'm hoping, oh yeah, my tank and my modern armor can give this city a good go. Oh, I've even got more jet bombers. Did you even see that one? Oh, perfect. Here we go. Another city taken. Ethiopia is being gobbled into the Persian Empire very nicely. Every time I do, I get tons more science, tons more culture. That's an economic policy that I've just taken. That must have been Big Ben in that city. Perfect. It's time to get online communities. Okay, that's given me quite a considerably large amount more tourism per turn. I'm picking up about 10 to 12 domestic tourists now each time. Yeah, I'm, yeah I've just got to get rid of Germany and Ethiopia. That's that's the, the goal. Oh, there's nothing quite like taking over a fully pillaged city. Please, please can we just have a button we press that fixes everything? Is that so much to ask? Oh, I didn't win a Nobel Prize in Literature. It's probably because none of my people can read and write because they're too busy bombing people, but never mind. I guess, I guess to be fair, that's, that's a bit cruel. They can bomb people and read and write. Things are not mutually exclusive. Uh, that's the jet fighter having fun. I was wondering about whether or not I should keep Ethiopia alive or not, but yeah, given their domestic tourists, they've got to die. I've got to take over all of their cities entirely. Don't think we can uh, well, afford to keep them in the game, so we shall not. Um, oh, I just gave two turns of that project. Uh, all right, well, that's fine then. That means I can get rid of integrated space cell now and pick up something different. Namely, I'm going to go force modernization just so we can do that. And I'm going to get rid of liberalism because I don't think it's very good. And I'm going to put back the pillage card in because I'm doing lots of pillaging right now. And pillage good. The more pillage, the better. As long as my core cities are ecstatic, don't really care about anything else. This city's not ecstatic. Whoa, what's going on here? Well, apparently I'm going to win a culture victory in 818 turns. Hey, that's good considering I'm only on turn 207. That's, that's practically next turn. One more city, and honestly, with every city that I take, I regret taking Warlord's Throne a little bit more. Oh, there's the particle siege cannon on the giant death robot. Oh, that's good. Makes me feel a bit better about everything. Tell you what, these jet bombers are disappointingly weak against Ethiopian cities. My goodness, they have a lot of resistance here. Good thing I have about 500 bombers. I, that's a lie, I've got 10. Could get another five though. So yeah, should probably think about doing that. What? Don't throw random modern armor at me just to kill my military engineers. They're building railways. Ethiopia, do you have no class? No class at all. Time for a World Congress vote, and this is quite exciting because I'm on 14 points. I physically can't win on this conference, which means I don't think the AI is going to vote against me on diplomatic victory. The only problem is that Germany has more favor than we do because they've been running carbon recapture this entire time. 2,536, that is a lot. And looking at this, they have six left. They put absolutely everything they own into this, which means they've probably gone for diplomatic victory on themselves. So I'm going to vote with it. I'm going to vote for them. I'm also going to go peace prize because unbelievably I'm generating a lot of diplomatic favor. So that would help me quite a lot. Oh, and a diplo point. I'll put a few votes on both of these. I've got quite a lot of favor. So it doesn't matter if I put a few in. Otherwise, border control went through to me last time. I think that could be forced. And espionage pact. It's always plus two. I'm going to go disrupt rocket tree. Uh, this is the most uncertain project. So I'm going to put 17 votes in this one. See if that goes through. But I think that is going to be absolutely what the AI votes for here. We don't want to let ourselves get into a situation again, to be fair, where Germany has more diplomatic favor than we do. So now I've got the recarbon, recarbon? The carbon recapture project. Oh, I don't want to recarbon the world. That's the exact opposite of what I'm trying to do. Now that I have that project myself, I really need to push against Germany. There's the biosphere, by the way. So we, we pivot way behind. 
And now we're making more culture, oh not culture at all, tourism from all of my renewable power. This has two effects. Firstly, all of the improvements that I've got down like wind turbines, solar farms, offshore wind farms, each one of those is now giving me 10 tourism because it's two power, which is tripled to six power, and then 25% twice gives you to about nine tourism. It works out about 10, I'm not entirely sure. But secondly, the power that all of my cities are generating from my government is now tripled. And that's working perfectly for me because that's now all producing tourism. But I'll, I'll have a look at that in a sec. Yep, look at that. Ludwig voted themselves 23 times. I would not have been able to stop that. So we forced that through. We pick up a victory point. They pick up three from it, which isn't great. But there's the border control. There's the espionage pact. Um, as you can see, the AI didn't really care for it. So I didn't have to put all my favor in there. But really, favor is easy to earn. I never think it's worth keeping. Uh, Nobel Peace Prize as well. Uh, we're already winning this one, which is a good sign. We're earning more favor from Germany. And now I'm on 17 points. Excellent. I'm going to get cybernetics. There is a victory point from Seasteads uh, that I haven't got yet. I do already have the point from Global Warming, so that'll put me on 18. One for Nobel Peace Prize. I'm in a good place. I'm in a very good place. But look at that, 3,500 tourism per turn now. So if we have a look at a uh, random city, you can see, look at that, 14 tourism. Amazed by my sources of green power. And it's because each city is giving three power. That is now tripled to nine power. And that on the biosphere is now converted into nine tourism, which is now plus 50%, which goes to 14 tourism. So that's 14 tourism in every single one of my 54 cities. So like that in itself is really, really good. But as you can see, I'm now also getting nine tourism in every eco improvement. And uh, let me tell you now, we're gonna be putting down a lot of eco improvements. I am now going to start throwing out builders and we are going to wind farm absolutely everywhere. Plus the world still hasn't, like it hasn't heated up at all. The polar ice has been trapped on one turn for the last six or seven turns because Germany's putting the projects in, I'm putting the projects in. It's it's mad how much it's working. Um, I should have rushed that exoplanet that I didn't ignore me that was, a, that was a mistake but never mind oh Menelik has got nanotech and smart materials yeah they are they are rushing through the projects if they get the project out before I kill them uh, that's going to be a big problem for me. Oh, look, they're still putting down naturalists. Oh, her rocket artillery is now 135 strength. Is that more powerful than my jet bombers? It is. Oh, there we go. That is an opportunity then to actually use units that aren't jet bombers to do an offensive war. How exciting is that? The answer is very exciting. It's very exciting. Look at that. And city taken with cavalry. Ha ha ha. Beautiful. Can we take Nijo with my tanks? Oh. That was close. Oh, don't tease me. Oh, well, what can you do? 148 strength. Giant death robot roars into action, firing at Desi now. Beautiful to see. What a beautiful world. Look how much tourism I'm putting on people now, though. Because the eco-tourism is not religious tourism. So I don't lose different religion and enlightenment penalties. So look, I'm getting 5,000 with the Ottomans. That's three tourists. So three, five, eight, 11, 14, 15... 18 domestic tourists per turn. It's a shame that Germany is also getting 18 tourists per turn, but that's not the point. <laughs> the point is I'm doing well now, okay? Leave me alone. Exoplanet Expedition goes off into space next to the Statue of Liberty in a city that's generating the eco power. We're doing everything we can in order to keep this all going at once. What can you do? We're still getting Eriscot. That was the first industrial zone we've ever made that has plus four adjacency. How is that a thing? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, Mongolia is still like the sort of little trade state there. We're ignoring that whilst we can. Speaking of tourism, Sarah Breed Love. 25% tourism towards civilizations. We have a trade route too. That's everyone. Well, I say everyone, except Ethiopia. Ethiopia doesn't count. Yes, yes, we're putting the carbon back now. Ha ha ha, this is fantastic. Right, we shall continue trying to do that. I do not have the project to rush the space project just yet. That is uh, unfortunate, but it's okay because we can carbon recapture in my capital. That's going to do pretty good. A lot of my cities are carbon recapturing. That is a theme, but we're also producing a ton of builders. I'm kind of alternating the cities between those two because don't forget, all of these builders, they all have tourism improvements. Every single one of them. This is exactly the sort of stage of the game where I spend most of my turns moving builders around. I had to put a mod in 
ages ago. I don't know if you've probably noticed it on my playthroughs, but um, when I use builders, it doesn't show me the yields on the tooltip. Like when I when I put improvements down, uh, it, it doesn't tell me how much production, for instance, a mine is going to give me. It was this old glitch problem. I don't know what you'd call it with builders late game where it would take about a minute for you to actually select a builder. It was the weirdest and most annoying bug. But uh, yeah, we managed to mod our way out of it, but it's just still very, very annoying. That's Nijo taken, which means Ethiopia is now only to my north. Let's go get Christo Redentor. Firing the rocket artillery, which is, I, I love it when late, you know, late game warfare, you still get regular units that actually have decent use. That's, a, that's always a nice thing. One final little bomb, and Desi is going to be introduced into my empire. Hello, friends. Join in. Mwahaha. The drone can just be moved forward, and oh yeah, look, there's a jet fighter. Interesting. Now, here's the experiment. Has Ethiopia used their jet bomber correct, or the jet fighter correctly? Is it going to intercept me? No, of course they haven't. One day, one day Civ will be released in such a way where all the units are used properly. Until that day, I will continue to jet bomb. More chances for the rocket artillery to attack. I'm actually prioritizing attacking with these units because they are by far less maneuverable than my jet bombers. So if I can get them to the front line and attack, they're the ones that attack first. Um, in fact, actually, Giant Death Robot can just walk into Axum, apparently. <laughs> Yay! Oh, Ethiopia literally cannot kill my units fast enough. We are just munching through them. Chewy, yet simultaneously delicious. Yum. It's in, uh, it's in the capital. Not far now, though. Not far. My bombers, they've still got the range. Uh, actually, they don't have a huge amount of range, but they've got some range. 25% extra tourism. Let's just have a quick look and see what that's done. 6,000 tourism per turn with Germany now. Oh, boy. That's a lot. Ottomans as well. Oh, imagine what's going to happen when the minus 50% from enlightenment disappears. It's going to be lovely. Am I actually catching up with a tourism victory right about now? 114 turns. Hey, that's an improvement. I'll take that. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, we'll just keep putting eco power down. Why not? Military emergency. No, 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 no. I'm going to have to waste 360 of my favor just so that I can try and keep war on my personal control and time scale. However, looking at that, I currently have diplomatic favor left. So I think that my vote failed and I believe there is now a diplomatic emergency. All I'm hoping is that it's just Ethiopia that has gone for this. However, there's maybe a way for my allies. Actually, this might work quite well. My allies, yes, Ludwig. Ludwig has declared on me, my other major rival. They were also a level two ally, which meant if I declared on them, I was gonna trigger a betrayal emergency, but they've just declared on me. That means that's effectively a three war, which is wonderful. The problem is it's an emergency war rather than a golden age war. So that, that doesn't help. Grievances will become a problem for me, but hey, I'll take it. This opens up a whole new front for me and I can just get stuck into Germany and start stealing all their culture. <laughs> ah. Well, if you're going to offer me the engineer, then yep, I'll pick up Shah and also Togo and also Alfred Nobel. Yay. Lots of great people. Lots of era score and even more city states that want trade requests. Look at that. All of the extra envoys. Still working on these as much as we can. Even though we're at war, we are basically holding envoy and suzerain with any city state we want. It's awesome. Oh, Nobel. What are you going to give me? No boost at all, but more great people points and that's important. Also using all of my gold still to get more jet bombers. I need to hit the aluminium cap. If I've got the aluminium, I might as well be using the bombers. They're too good not to. Rocket artillery continue to strike the city in a very useful way. And I still have a few bombers just on the edge here. With that hit, actually, I think, is it worth pillaging? Yes, yeah, 700 gold for an aqueduct pillage. Yes, it's absolutely worth doing that. Take the city. 12 population, we now share a border with Ethiopia's capital. Excellent. Now, the one thing I do need to check quickly is what my government looks like because I just took Patala Palace and I noticed that before I then went and took over more stuff because currently none of my cards are working. I always love when it does that. Oh, go on, man. Liberalism back in. 43 amenities that card puts in. It just pushes so many of my cities into getting 10% more yields on everything and yields are good. Oh, the jet bombers can't get through to the city because there is a missile crew cruiser in the lake the one tile lake it's it's actually doing something useful i never thought i'd see the day even my jet can't get too close to it 
All right, we're gonna have to readjust. I think my rocket artillery. Oh yeah, the rocket artillery can just blow the city, blow it up in one go. What about my death robot? It can do some damage, but actually, it's pretty ineffective, unbelievably. So, all right, I don't want to get it to hide into the city. So we'll attack the city with a giant death robot for now and just leave it at that. But that's interesting. Oh, that's a hurricane, and it's not far from my capital. I mean, not that my capital's really doing anything too important right now, but it's still near my capital. And that's a shame. Look at this, 33 power from renewable resources. I was really worried about putting power projects into my capital to boost the space projects. I didn't want to be generating too much CO2, but I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. Eiffel Tower. This is plus two appeal now on every tile of my empire, which does two things. Firstly, all national parks are worth eight tourism, roughly, more. And secondly, all of my Alcazars now have plus one science. Yay! Or, as uh, as we say in Ursaland, huzzah! So we'll let the pile uh, appeal, a pile? We'll let the pile, piles of the pile work themselves out. But uh, that should be an amazing pickup for us, which is lovely. Now, how many cities have spaceports? Should be quite a few. Axum, Babylon, Desi, my capital. So actually I've managed to conquer and steal quite a few of these, which is fairly fun. Let's get these laser stations into the sky. Was Babylon? Put one into the into the sky from there, and the other cities still need to fix their. All all of the spaceports have been pillaged in the other cities, so that's not great. Why? I've just realised I've got tons of places for national parks. All right, that's where my faith is going to go. It'll make all my cities happy, and it'll give me more tourism. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Plus, uh, rocket artillery. Can you please just dismantle this boat? Thank you. That makes a huge difference. And wha-bam! Okay, the air defences have uh, seemingly and inexplicably disappeared from this city. Oh no! What could have happened? Ethiopia's cities are so strong. My jet bombers are just not doing any damage. But I realise I could be getting slightly more here because I don't have wars of religion on. That's a silly little thing that I've missed there. Pop that in instead of wars of religion and... Fear my bombish attack of 129. Yay, look, it worked. There you go. Hey, if it's a little bit more damage, that's all that matters. Tell you what, I can't wait for some more uranium. Giant death robots. I really don't think I've got enough of them. And as I said, I did see some uranium in various weird places. Actually, how does Bear Settler kicking around? Why am I not just sending them down there? Get this uranium. That, that would be sensible. That would be very sensible. Turn 213 and I have officially got all techs. Every single tech. I haven't got all civics. I've kind of missed out on a few of them, but all techs is a good thing. Also 847 diplomatic favor. The world is now cooling. I'm bringing my CO2 level down below hopefully zero very soon, which should cause the diplomatic crash when we start to freeze the world. The usual old, I'm going to call it an exploit. But it's all one we've had fun with. Let's not lie. Rocket artillery strikes on the capital again. Goodness me, that is so strong. That is so strong. We're not really doing much pillaging at the moment is the only thing. Doesn't matter though. Capital's taken and Cristo Redentor has been taken as well. That means nobody gets an enlightenment negative to my tourism anymore. So my tourism is going to be doing huge amounts. Five tourists from the Ottomans, four from Georgia, that's nine, five from Mongolia, that's 14. Babylon's gonna be five, that's 19. 23 when you include Congo. So I'm going to start getting 23 envoys every turn now. I don't really, in theory, have to destroy Germany and Ethiopia, but if I do, it'll make the game a lot quicker. So, you know, I'm absolutely going to do that. Actually, same turn. I can take this city, population 8, and look at all these ski resorts. Yeah, it's good to have all of these ski resorts. I'm also putting national parks down now. If I had a problem with Iriscore, I wouldn't have one very soon. Yeah, uh, how many turns have we got left into the next one? 33 turns and I'm already way over halfway on to the normal age. Yeah, I think we're going to be fine. Actually, three cities in one turn. Jimmer falls as well. And this opens up a whole front with Germany. It's only a four population city here, but look at all the districts. Man, since we start taking this over from Germany, we're going to be laughing. Some of these cities are massive, like Germany City there, 26 population. Is that the biggest in the world? That's got to be close to the biggest in the world. Yeah, it is. Germany still have the first, second and fifth best cities in the game. I mean, 
It, they've played well. Germany has played incredibly well. It's been fantastic to go against an AI with this much like force to it. They are slowly winning a culture victory. <laughs> They're doing as well as we are. That's the crazy thing. And they are going to space. They've got nanotech, which is wonderful. They're going to put a terrestrial station in. I'm starting to speed up my science victory now. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the AI this game. Really impressed. Also, this is a fun little bug. Look, can't close the window. Escaping doesn't do anything. It happens when you load the turn and then you click this button, you know, to, to actually have a look at this. I can put other screens in front of it, but I, uh, I can't get rid of this one. The only way I figured out to, you know, reset it is to physically reset the game. So, yep. Yay! I do love the ridiculousness of being 24 turns from the next Congress and having already a thousand favour. It's, it's a lot of fun. Rocket artillery power. Look at all these shots. Oh, they do so much more damage than the bombers do. That's half the walls in one little session there. That's another laser station. I have to say, jumping between all these victory conditions is crazy. I have literally no idea what's going on. I love it. McKelly, I believe, falls. All of these extra spaceports are quite handy. There is a card where I can get more aluminium for every spaceport that I own, and that is very tempting to pick up. It would be a lot more bombers. Not that I really need more bombers, but as I say, sometimes when you've got a lot of something, all you want to do is get more of it. Let's keep getting this city. I reckon we can probably take Ethiopia out this turn if we're lucky. Oh my god, I'm actually going to use a giant death robot jump to get round candy and this mountain range. Look at that. Tactical jumping. Kermit in its truest form. I think that's Ethiopia taken out, which is pretty good. I'm going to lose some local tourists, or some domestic tourists. Uh, how many have I got with Ethiopia? 21. So I lose those. But what I'm going to be doing is massively reducing the amount of tourists that I have to take to win the culture victory, providing I can take Ludwig out of the game as well, which, you know, is my target next of all. Can you feel the game desperately thinking everything that I make it do right now? Oh, bless it. It doesn't know what's going on. Right, Ottomans, I really want, I really, really wish that the Ottomans would make uh, friends with me again, but alas, they don't seem to be playing ball. I don't know what I could have done to them to make me, uh, to make them dislike me like this. It's very, very strange. Well, time, I guess, to introduce myself to Germany now. You didn't think you were escaping from this one, did you? No, no, no. They have 1,530 military strength somewhere. Whereabouts, I'm not entirely sure, but somewhere. Cologne is less of an important city in terms of the actual target itself. Oh, I just realized I can build my unique improvement over an oasis. Oh, that's really cool. It's more because I can use it as a sort of shuttle way through into Germany and hit their population 26 city directly. Ottomans, I'm getting 10,000 tourism per turn with at the moment. Oh, I love that. That's, that's mad. Yeah, we've officially hit that point now where I would win a culture victory if Germany was no longer in the game. So I'd lose 41 tourists. I'd be on 282. That's still above the Congo. So yeah, there you go. Well, best thing I can do is just continue to make national parks. Just to keep increasing the tourism. Yeah, never let up. Never let up. Well, the first of the German cities is now going to fall. And look, they've built spaceports for me and they've put tile improvements down as well. How kind of them. 18. Loyalty missing per turn there. You know what? I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. City number two. There's Colin we've taken. And okay, it hasn't given me exactly what i wanted but with a drone in this city oh yeah now we can see now we can see and more importantly build a railway all the way so that my rocket artillery can get involved immediately hit 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 and then go and find where the bombers are oh no that was um i just drove the tank into that uh, city that was a mistake i don't know what the real life military equivalent of a misclick would be like <laughs> Just sending an entire tank brigade into a wall because someone in the office just decided to, you know, put the wrong click on a map or something. It's just like, whoopsie. In fact, it's not going to be my third city in a turn. It is. The 26th population city falls immediately with Broadway in it. Oh, yes. Okay. Munich, we, we now have a direct passage to. That was quicker than I had feared and hoped. Oh, and I couldn't help myself as well. Uh, there, in terms of wonders left, there is... <laughs> something but uh, also the library university and research lab meaning that we can immediately go for Amundsen Scott right in the middle of this snowy tundra 
and then rush it and next turn hopefully that will be finished uh, i realized i didn't actually have enough gold there to finish that that is embarrassing ah well the production will happen when the production's ready there's something very satisfying about every turn like turn after turn just putting these improvements down ah uh, very relaxing and it's a good thing i find it relaxing because my lord there are a lot of these damn improvements to put down <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. I know it's late game, but yeah, we've Auckland. Four production on these tiles. It's pretty, pretty ridiculous. Oh yeah, this is what I mean about using railroad. Oh, it's just flying units around the map in order to deal with a battleship, which has basically all of the anti-air that Germany's managed to put into the sky. Fantastic. I'm having to convert my cities pretty rapidly though. Because I'm taking over so many other cities with different religions, I cannot accidentally let myself get to a point where I follow someone else's religion. That would be that would be very bad. So Inquisitors are being popped down everywhere. Anyone else ever noticed how cool the Red Keep looks from above? It's like lots of little ice creams. Also looks strange when you build it not in the tundra. I realize we're closing in on Estadio, which is quite exciting, and Munich in the capital. That'll make my cities very happy indeed. Well, I think we'd better take Munich. It's got four, 140 defense. That's pretty big, but luckily for me, my units are also pretty damn tough, and I have about 500 bombers, none of which are actually in range. Yep, nope, all of them are just frustratingly just out of range, but it's... Well, we'll keep attacking until we get something. Hey, a listening post. Oh, that actually helps. That helps a lot. Fantastic. We just took potty. I'm actually gaining cities from Georgia without even needing to fight for them. Well, all right then. I will have to keep enjoying this and keep getting cultists. Attack Munich, attack Munich, attack Munich, attack Munich. I mean, that's pretty effective, isn't it? Let's take over a stadio as well as a stadium. I'm hoping this will make my cities very happy. It's all 70 ecstatic. There we go. The pattern that's given me over a thousand culture per turn. Ah, yes. A stadio. Totally balanced as ever. And even better, by taking Ulm, I steal Forbidden City, which gives my government a wildcard policy. Delicious. Need to do that before I forget, because uh, I'm getting none of these benefits whilst I have a card expired. I, I still love that rule about Civ. The game just breaks as soon as you take that out. Cities of a spaceport gain power, which is good because that's tourism, and aluminium. That's good because that's bombers. Though the main exciting thing is I keep picking up uranium from somewhere. So this is now my fourth giant death robot. I, yeah, I'm, I'm just, again, don't don't complain. Just Just take them. Especially because they are so ridiculously powerful. Wow, two of them can just blast about half of the walls of Frankfurt off. Sure thing. Well, I think that means that I can take over Frankfurt as well. More spaceports, more delicious wonders, more tourism, more happiness. You've just got to say yes to it all, really. Oh, this is what I love about going into Future Civic. Suddenly I have six governor titles available. Um, let's just give Raina every promotion because I, I don't know what else to do. Cool. And then <laughs> I'm just throwing promotions out randomly now. I don't really care. I'm gaining about 500 tourism per turn at the moment. That's how many of these improvements I'm putting down. That's crazy. 11,344 tourism per turn with Babylon. I mean, I'm now comfortably high enough, by the way, that even if I remove Germany from the game, I'll instantaneously win that culture victory. So it's, it's looking okay at the moment. My biggest problems are diplomatically. Someone could start stealing a lot of points. Religion, I'm kind of keeping an eye on. How's my science doing, by the way? Oh, yeah, okay, I should have that in about five or six turns. Good. Especially because it keeps speeding up. Yay! Oh, occasionally you find a city which is not protected at all. Oh, Dortmund. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Can you not withstand four giant death robots? Ah, oh, just, just poor show. Poor show. Oh, my encampment can almost entirely destroy the battleship. That's handy because that thing has pretty much all of the defensive capacity of this city. There is an anti-air gun in it, but I mean, it's not the strongest thing. Dortmund falls and with it, Petra. Exciting Petra. Lovely. Sorry, Berlin. You're next. You have zero defenses, pretty much. I mean, look at it. 106? Really? Is that all you can do? In fact, that's your hit my might not need much. I, I think I probably can just take it with two giant death robots and some bombers. Yeah, okay, these, these remaining cities, not so powerful. I'm still picking out city-state quests because I can. <laughs> 
Writer, that's three envoys, lovely. That's Arkhan, which is pretty much the final really super strong city. All of the other German cities on this map now are kind of all little island cities. We'll take that. That's nice. That is nice to see. Well, I think this hopefully is going to catapult quite a few things at the same time. We can take Monster with a giant death robot, because of course we can. We can take Würzburg with a giant death robot, because of course we can. Sorry, Spy, ignore the fact that that happened. And we can take Nuremberg with a giant death robot. So that's three cities taken in one little attack. And I believe, and the game is agreeing with me with the horrendous loading time, but I think Germany is now out of the game, which is huge. That is absolutely huge because their 1,348 domestic tourists are now going to disappear. Oh, the game is having to think about this. What happens now? This would be a normal victory. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that sorry. <laughs> not, not that sorry at all. But there you go. 484 tourists over 255. That's what you get for having 6,700 tourism per turn. Oh, yeah, we are earning a lot. What does that even mean? Oh, it means this. The Cosmopolitan Expedition. Show the world the dominance of your people's identity is by hosting an expedition. Well, we'll ignore that. Showcasing its ubiquitous influence, asserting your civilization's cultural legacy. This is one of the victories. It gives you two diplomatic victory points. I had forgotten about that. Aha, uh -huh. I'm on 18 out of 20. I was just thinking I was going to have to go into the World Congress with 2000 votes and just, you know, win like that. That's what I was building towards. I was freezing the world because I thought I was going to have to do the diplomatic victory manually. That That's nice. Only 350 production? Well, I mean, I, I'm yeah, that's I'll take it. I'm actually going to throw a few more traders at my capital just in case. Just in case we need a lot of production for something. Well, good thing is now I can put all my builders to sleep. I had so many of these damn builders just sort of flowing around everywhere, but no, it's all good. They've done what they need to do, and now, now I can sleep. No more wind turbines. My dreams will just be let, like, not endless spinning of these things over and over. Well, we just need a couple more things now. Tbilisi and Kabasa need to be brought under the fold for my domination victory, and I need to convert both of these civilizations to my religion. I actually think the easiest way of doing that is just to wipe them from the game. And then I, you know, naturally the whole world will follow my religion <laughs> because there'll only be my world left. First project done. One victory out of five. And at the same time, city hits 20 population. It would be good if I was the biggest city, but I'm not. I'm nowhere near the biggest city. What are you going to do? Pivotal discovery. Announce the discoveries from my, your civilization space expeditions that are bound to shake the foundations of humanity's understanding the universe. <laughs> there's, there's some grammar here. Two more victory points. I mean, yeah, sure. I keep getting two points from doing this, apparently. Nice. I, I'll take it. I mean, I was going to get a point for peace prize anyway, but I shall take it all the less. No, none the less? None the less? The less. Oh my god, look at these trade routes. Oh, I almost want to go communism for this. Plus three combat strength against everybody. Don't mind if I do. Georgia is the first person to attack because she's weak up, but also is only a level one ally from before. Golden Age War, let's do it. You can see Congo. Congo is the other target, but they are an, a level two alliance. I had a better alliance with them, so it will trigger some sort of emergency as soon as I declare on them. I'll do it in this order. Makes makes it a little bit easier. So I'd substantially and subtly moved all of my units up to the borders, and I'm really hoping that jet bombers do a lot more against Georgia. Oh yeah, they do. All right, so compared to the war against Germany, this shouldn't be as much of a stretch, but uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. AI always has a way of becoming a little bit annoying. Actually, I need another bomber, but that is the first take. Uh, as I say, Tbilisi is what I want, but I need to actually just remove Georgia from the game. It's easier that way, then I don't need to convert them religiously. It's a very civ concept, isn't it? It's like, yeah, well, we could just take the time converting them manually and properly, but uh, it would take too long. So let's just uh, wipe them out. Wa-bam, 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 wa-bam. Oh yeah, 15 population city taken in. Pretty much one assault there, lovely. Oh, you know what? Hell, I'm just declaring war at the same time. I mean, honestly, what's an emergency with 3,000 diplomatic favor? We'll, we'll be fine. 
I mean, what else am I going to do with all my giant death robots? That the, These are the questions. These are the questions that you need to consider. There you go. Science Project. Pivotal. Discovery. Two more diplomacy points. Amundsen Scott Research Station as well. 20% science, 10% production in all cities. I just didn't feel like I had enough stats or yields, you know? <laughs> I was lacking them. I feel like this playthrough is just one failure after another. I can't believe it's actually like turn, turn 224. We've already got the science victory and the culture victory. What is going on with this game? Oh well, geopolitical accord. Sounds like a fun project to get. Perfect. There's the third victory, the diplomatic victory. I don't, you know what, I like this mod. It's very, very satisfying. I could see this being very good on multiplayer on a much faster game pace. Maybe Renaissance or even Industrial Era Star online speed. This could be, yeah, be really good fun. Well, I've been pushing further north slightly, taking over a few more cities. And excitingly, there's Kabasa, which is the Congo capital. And here is Tbilisi, which is the Georgian capital. So with those two, we own every single capital on the map, like so. And I can now put down my beautiful absolute proclamation. Declare the might and supremacy of my civilization by proclaiming my absolute and triumphant rule over the whole world. Yes, yes, I think I shall do that. I'm also going to celebrate by continuing to just build about 7 million traders from this city. It's almost just like an excuse to see how many traders I can get from one city. Now at this point I could stop and just peacefully convert everybody to my religion. Um, and to that I say, no, no of course I'm not going to do that. We're going to continue conquering with my giant death rabbits. They can't hear, poor things. Absolute proclamation, one more victory to do. And even better, and this is genuinely like even better, I have just noticed that I had six envoys left and I don't actually own Chinggeti. So this city state, if you didn't know, produces one faith for every follower of the city per trade route. I have a lot of trade routes coming from my capital and it has 20 followers. Let me just show you exactly the chaos this brings. 100 and, uh, sorry, 1,800 1, faith becomes 3,312. So we've almost doubled it. That's a, that's a lot of extra faith. Just just in case uh, just because I didn't have enough. And John Roebling just continuing to make my capital infinitely better. Oh, well, better finish off conquering all of these cities, eh? Not too many more to go. Uh, just a couple of silly island cities, which is good because I've got death robots that like a swim. And also, seemingly, like crabs as well. Yum. I love the idea. Just the idea of a giant death robot eating a crab in order to heal. Like, what's it doing? Does this prove that giant death robots are sentient? I'd, I'd, I don't know. If it doesn't, it really should. I'd love, I'd, I'd just the idea of a giant death robot just sort of bending down in order to go and grab a, a crab and going, mmm, yum, 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 sort of personifies them a little bit more, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's really good. Oh, I wish your units would just drive through civilian units when you do the path thing to go and attack them. The amount of times I've ended up in the sea because like some settler has blocked me or something, it's very annoying. So a little bit of an expected slash unexpected complication is that uh, I have so many cities now, I've fallen out from my own religion which I, I knew was happening which I've been buying apostles and inquisitors everywhere to kind of stop that from happening but it's funny to see that like yeah the entire religion can just be lost purely because of the amount of conquering that I'm doing it's all good though look we can we can get a lot of cities on side very quickly just by sending these inquisitors out um you have to say this apostle though not a fan of you you can absolutely get lost friend Nice little trick for when you're trying to convert civilizations quickly. Go for the small population cities. They don't have as much religious pressure on them, so they're much easier to flip than the big population ones. That, I believe, is Georgia knocked out of the game. It took probably about five turns to conquer her entire empire. Every time I took a city and took uranium, that was another giant death robot. I've got about seven or eight of them now. I've got probably 20 bombers. I still have five rocket artillery armies just running around. It's quite effective. I won't lie. Actually, I can't even make peace with Babylon. That's how fast this has been. How many turns have I got until I've only, it's only been six turns this entire war. And that literally the next city is, uh, is Congo taken, which is this giant death robot making their way over now. That leaves me with Babylon, Ottomans, and Genghis in the Mongolian Empire. All one city empires. Actually, apart from the Ottomans, I have kind of left the Ottomans alone. I took Istanbul with loyalty. I converted them to my religion. After that point, I don't really care. Your swords cleave only flesh. Oh my lord, that is, uh, that is quite the statement. 
I've converted myself to my own religion again, though. Yay! That means I can go to my capital, which I am just throwing food at at the moment. Look at that, 400 food, 500 production, mostly from trade routes, all of this stuff. Universal Canon. Guide the world to transcendence by establishing an official canon to be observed by our universal community of followers. Yes. Let's do that. 11 spare governor titles. Um, okay. Just... Just keep having promotions, everyone. I don't even know. I don't even know who I'm promoting. Just everyone. Everyone get promoted. You have a promotion. You have a promotion. <laughs> um, I've almost done. I've almost finished the entire governor tree. Where my governors are or what they're doing, I, I, have, I have no idea. Well, there's Universal Cannon, the fifth project that I have completed. Now, I don't think I win the game immediately. I think I've then got to do one more project to win the game. In theory, not entirely sure. Yeah, military aid requests, yeah, those will all fail because the people targeting them have died. Wonder who could have done that? Not entirely sure. Test of time. Claim a historical victory over all other civilizations and make sure the legacy of your people and of your rule transcend the passing of time itself. Oh my, it's quite, it's quite extravagant, isn't it? I love it. Does this mean that as a YouTuber, I get to make the statement that uh, the game has officially said that I transcend time? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like quite the claim. Oh my lord, I have never been happy to see a screen. Historical victory! We did it! And I actually did that faster than I've actually played some games normally. Absolutely mad how quickly these things go. Augustus Caesar, 4,949 points. That is up there with my best. Lovely. Buildings constructed. I actually didn't build too many compared to Menelik and Ludwig. Ludwig had an absolute game. I was really proud of them, the way the AI played this game. They really did do well. Cities founded. I wasn't even the most. That was Georgia. Districts constructed. Again, I say this every time I play Civ. This is why humans beat the AI. We build districts. Get your districts down. Every city should have max at all times. Then you win. Great people earned. Any player that goes culture always wins this one. And yeah, as you can see, Ludwig going mad. Culture. Ludwig doing really well until I spiked at the end, ruining the scale of that graph. I imagine, yep, science is exactly the same. And faith, I've probably done the same thing as well. Yeah. I mean, look how late into the game I start winning. It wasn't until well over three quarters into the game I actually started winning on score. That's how well the AI was doing here. Religions founded. Good. Good. I have the last religion and we still won the religious victory. Didn't really spread it much. Kind of just killed everyone else. Units killed upwards of about a hundred. Units lost. I think I probably would have lost a few. Yeah, cultists and religious units and things like that. Wonders constructed. Did I build? Yeah, I did build a few. Yeah, I mean, Ludwig again having a game. Wars declared. Such a small scale of graph. I know that one always doesn't work. It's, it's very, very strange. Cities captured. Like again, I didn't really take anything until well over into halfway through the game. Poor Genghis. That was such a war though. And then we actually liberated a city back to them, so their graph goes down at the end. There it is. The test of time. The final victory. We did it. And look at the city. Like, this is actually, as cities go, really pretty. It's kind of next to some reefs in an ocean in this little peninsula. There are mountains behind, ski resorts. We have Renaissance walls that protect skyscrapers. <laughs> Eco power, literally for days. Uh, as empires go, it was beautiful. And the trade routes I can make are quite considerably ridiculous. Hang on, if I just quickly pop Roebling down and pick this trader, you can see, I mean, look at this route. I, this isn't even an optimized one, but it goes through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cities trade posts. Look at that, that's, that's mad. That's why this city's doing so well. I've still got another nine trade routes I could put in it, and it's already up to 600 production. <laughs> Oh, it actually helps when you don't have a commercial hub in a city as well, because no one can thieve that gold. Why you can't thieve gold from harbours? I'll never be sure. What a game though. Undisputed Lord of the World with my little vassal states here and there. This one's currently at war with me, but don't worry. We'll make them forget. We'll make them forget. The world minus 1.2 degrees cooled. <laughs> We're freezing it so that nobody else gets a diplomatic say. Look, there you go. There is the bug in action. Zero diplomatic favor for all three people because they've all put carbon into the atmosphere at some point, which means they're currently getting minus 20 per turn. No one will ever vote against me. Even if the world is under an ice cap, Persia, led by Cyrus, will win everything. This game took an absolute age to film. It was such an endeavor. If you enjoyed it, if you want to see 
see me do things like this again, then consider subscribing, consider liking the video and commenting. All of that stuff really, really helps. It would massively, massively be appreciated. However, I, Ursa Ryan, yet again have another fiendish idea for a video which should be coming up very shortly after this one if you just continue watching. So until then, it has been a pleasure. Thank you all for watching everybody. See you all next video. Goodbye! And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Tennant, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, MTG Golfman. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!